Now that we've covered ISO and shutter speed, the final part of exposure control is aperture. The aperture is just like the human eye's pupil. It's responsible for just how much light is let in. Just like the pupil, it responds to light. For example, when there's a lot of light, the pupil contracts or closes down. When there's less light, it expands and lets more light in. Aperture works in the same way. The aperture refers to the opening that's not in the camera, but it's in the lens itself. It's a physical diaphragm through which light passes. And it's measured in f-stops. The smaller the f-stop number, like 1.4 for example, means the aperture is wider and it's fully open, letting in more light. The larger the f-stop number, like f22, means the hole is a lot smaller letting in less light. So just like the shutter and ISO, it affects how much light is seen on the sensor. The larger the hole, the more light. The smaller the hole, the less light. However, this not only affects the brightness of the image, but also affects the area of the image that's in focus. This is known as depth of field. A wide aperture like f1.8 meaning the aperture hole is open wide, gives a small depth of field. This is where you'll have someone or something in focus, but the background is blurry or out of focus, known as bokeh. And this is very popular with filmmakers and cinematic video. So let's take a look at this diagram, which hopefully will explain aperture a little bit easier for you. So at the top, we have a range of apertures from f16, it can be f22, but in this case, it's f16. You can see the aperture is fully closed. And so that means just the minimum amount of light, this pinhole is what is letting light in. So it's very dark. And as we go down in the numbers, so f11, f8, f5.6, and so on, all the way down to f1.4, you'll see that the numbers get smaller the hole gets bigger. So at f1.4, it's very large and lets in the most amount of light. And you can actually get lenses that are f1.2 and things like that. So what does this mean for depth of field? If we look down here at depth of field, we have three scenarios here. In this case, as the aperture gets larger, the hole gets larger, the depth of field, the stuff in blue here, actually shrinks, it gets narrower. So in this case, if we have a depth of field of 2.8, or if we were using 1.8 or 1.4, the depth of field is very narrow. So it means everything in blue, so this tree and these flowers in the foreground would be in focus. But beyond that, so the stag and the water and the other tree and the mountains would all be out of focus. If we go to a slightly larger f-stop here, this is 5.6. The hole is uh, getting a lot smaller. So this lets in less light, but it increases the depth of field. So now the tree and the stag are both in focus here. So everything from the stag forward will be in focus. This tree, the flowers and the stag, but beyond it, so the other tree and the mountains and the lake will be blurry, be out of focus. Then finally we get down to like f16 or f22 and what this means is the aperture is the smallest it lets in less light but the depth of field is the most so everything in the scene is in focus from the mountains the trees the flowers the stag the river everything so this is what if you want to shoot landscapes or wide open places you want to go with a higher f-stop number so the smaller the hole, the more depth of focus. The larger the hole, the lower the number. The minimum depth of focus, or the shallower depth of focus. This focus range is very shallow, meaning if the person walks back or forth a foot or two, then they too will be out of focus because they've stepped out of the depth of focus area. Now, if your aperture is set to a high value, like f16, meaning that the hole is very small, there's a large depth of field and everything will be in focus. 
This is used for landscape scenes where you want everything in focus. Or used in movies to tell a story where you see everything behind the main characters. This was done in this movie scene. We get a sense that these soldiers have been here for a while because the people in the background are doing day-to-day -day tasks, such as washing or getting haircuts. This was shot on a small aperture, something like F-22. So the people behind the main characters are also in focus. If they'd used a large aperture like f1.8 and a small depth of field, the soldiers in the background would be blurry and the story wouldn't be so obvious. But what about medium apertures like f8? This, unlike the other two, gives you a larger depth of field, but still has some blur in the background, but not so blurry that you can't see what's there. This draws the eye again to the multiple things in the foreground being in focus and again helps with the story. So let's look at this scene. This was shot with an f2.8 aperture. So the hole in the aperture is quite large. So the depth of field should be quite shallow. So it's very bright. This was shot at f16, which means the hole was very small and lets in less light. You can see here, even though bright, the background is blurry. The same goes with the one shot on F16. Even though it's dark, more focus in the background is obvious. So to compensate for this, on the bright image, I can dial down the ISO to help get exposure correct. And on the dark one, I can increase the ISO to make the exposure lighter. But what about iPhones? In your iPhone and most other Androids other than some Samsungs have a fixed aperture for each camera. This means that it is not variable and you can't change it in the normal way. Unlike in a mirrorless camera where you have three elements that you can adjust for exposure, which is ISO, shutter speed and aperture, on an iPhone you only have two because the aperture is fixed. So to adjust exposure, we can only really use ISO and shutter speed. And one other trick for aperture, if we want to get a blurry background, we can move closer or further away from it. Because your aperture is fixed, you'll know what your depth of focus is. From the iPhone 13 series, Apple has introduced cinema mode for video. This allows you to change the f-stop using software. Basically, it's portrait mode for video. In iPhone 11 and 12 Pro, you can get the same effect using a third-party app like Focus Live and ProTake. So let's go outside now and see how we can get that bokeh effect using cinema mode. So while we're talking about aperture, from the iPhone 13 series, they have a thing called cinematic mode that Apple introduced. And in the native app, you're able to use this so we can keep this bush here in focus and anything beyond it will be out of focus and it will use software to mimic an aperture change. Even though the iPhone has a fixed aperture. It's going to use software to mimic that blurred background. So let me show you how. Okay, we're in photo mode now. We're going to head over to cinematic mode. Once we're in cinematic, we're going to hit this F at the top left.
And then it's gonna bring up that we're in 2.8 as our F stop. What I can do is I can drag that so the background isn't quite as blurry like this. So we're in the one times camera and I can hold and press on the bush that I want to be in focus. The autofocus lock comes on. And then what I want to do then is I can make the background even more blurry by going the other way here. Now, some people say that during video recording, if the um, f-stop is too low, you might get artifact around edges, if, especially with people moving. So they suggest going a little bit higher to like f5 or something. And it's still quite blurry in the background. But for what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to go all the way down to 2.8, like so, or 2.0. I'm gonna just hit the focus area I want, hold it so it locks onto there, and then record some video. And then you get that nice blurry bokeh feeling. So even if you shot the cinematic mode, uh, it doesn't matter what your f-stop was really, because this is later on in editing, you just edit the, the video click on the f the f stop here and then you can change your aperture so here we're at 2.0 we can go down to where it was shot around 4.5 or 5 and we can go all the way up to 16 and we can see the background getting clearer so if you don't like a certain part let's say you shot it like we said way down low you're able to edit it out and then bring the f-stop back up a little bit so the depth of field is a little bit more uh, deeper and then you may not get that artifact image that blurriness around the edge of the bush there where it gets right at 2.0 so again it's a great idea that you can shoot it like that or you can actually edit it later on in post Okay, so I just wanted to let you know that it doesn't matter if you don't have the latest iPhone. So this is a Model 8, so the 8 Plus I think this is. It has two cameras, a wide and a normal. So I think the normal camera is uh, an f1.8 and the telly is, uh, is 2.8. So we're going to use the 1.8. So one times magnification, which is the best quality camera on all of the iPhones. And if you don't have cinematic mode, it's no problem. You can get that same blurry effect. What you have to do is get as near as you can to the object that you want to keep in focus and that will blur the background out. So I'm just gonna put the phone in here on this uh, tripod. It's a little lightweight tripod just because it makes it easier for me. And then what I'm gonna do is get this as close to the object that I want to keep in focus and that will automatically blur the background. So let's take a look and see what we can do. Okay, so I'm in the video app and what I've got here is I've got this um, as near to this top of this um, lantern as I can so if I click over here you can see it's going to affect the sky which will adjust an exposure and that's what I want so without moving that too much now I'm going to just click on focus onto the lantern and you'll see automatically that the lemon tree in the back is 
blurry. So if I click on the lemon tree, it goes into focus. But if I, but I don't like the sky over on this side here. So I'm just going to click on that to bring that back. I think I'm not too far away there. And now that's the video that I'm going to uh, capture. I'm in the one times uh, magnifier. So the, the main camera and the image of the lantern in front of us is in focus and the tree and everything else behind is slightly blurry. So even with, you know, this older iPhone camera, you can still get the same effect. So let's summarize now what we've learned here with Aperture. Aperture also can change exposure to make the exposure lighter or darker. It affects depth of field, as we've seen. And also, just a reminder that the lower the f-stop number, or the f number, the more background blur. So the lower the number, like 1.4, 1.8, you'll get more a shallower depth of field and more um, background blur. The higher the F number, like F16 or F22, you'll get everything in focus throughout the whole scene, like in landscape. So with that, let's move on to the next video.